In today's video, we will be looking at the finite element analysis of a shaft subjected to torsion. Primarily, we will be looking at the problem which needs to be analyzed. We will then look at the conventional methods to solve the problem using the strength of materials approach and the analytical finite element approach. This will be followed by the ANSYS static structural analysis and be concluded by comparing the results achieved by all the three methods. The following problem will be studied and analyzed. We must find out the angle of twist at two distinct locations along the length of the shaft and the total shear stress and the resultant moment occurring at the fixed end by using the relations of angular velocity and power, we can find out the torque being exerted on the shaft. By manipulating the general torsion equation and the given data and finding out the torque, we can find out the angle of twists and the induced shear stress. By considering the shaft under equilibrium, we can find out the moment at the fixed end we divided the domain into two elements as we need to find the angle of twist at distinct locations as shown in the figure. And then we write the elemental matrix for each element. After the elemental matrix, we assemble the global matrix by combining the elemental matrix. The boundary conditions are imposed in the global matrix, which is the angle of twist at the fixed end and the twisting moment being exerted on the shaft. By solving the equation, we obtain the twisting moment at the fixed end and the angle of twist at the node. The angle of twist is then substituted in the general torsion equation to find the induced shear stress. Now we'll look at the ANSYS workbench for the simulation. First, Drag and drop the static structural module into the workbench. Go to engineering data and edit the material properties. To change the shear modulus, we first need to change the derive from option and set it to shear modulus and poisons ratio. And then we can change shear modulus to suit our problem. Now go to Design Modeler, change the unit, use the Primitives option to be able to directly make a cylinder representing a shaft of desired cross-section and length as shown. Do not forget to change the operation to Add Frozen. Find the angle of twist in between the length. We need to slice the body, select the plane, and make a new plane with an offset. Click on Generate. Select the Slice option and select the newly created plane and body to be sliced. Form a new part and then set the share topology option to automatic. And now we will go to ANSYS mechanic. generate a mesh of 20 millimeters uh, with its behavior as hard by using the body sizing option, selecting both the bodies and clicking on generate mesh. create a named selection for the free end and the fixed end of the shaft by selecting the respective faces. 
and using the named selection option. This is done to not cause any confusion when applying the boundary conditions. Apply the boundary condition by changing the scoping method from geometry selection to named selection. Apply the fixed support and moment boundary conditions to the fixed and free end, respectively, using the fixed support and moment option. This can also be done by using geometry selection and directly selecting the faces. We can find out the angle of twist by manipulating the length of the arc formula. Thus, we need to know the deformation at particular locations. This can be done by using the total deformation option for each of the two bodies. The shear stress is simply found by using the maximum shear stress function. For finding out the moments, we can simply use the probe tool and moment reaction function and set its boundary condition to a fixed support. Now click on solve. After solving, find out the angle of twists as shown All the results are tabulated as shown. The results of the FEA matrix method and ANSYS match the analytical method with good accuracy. And then the following are the references that you can use for further reading. Did you think about which failure theory should be considered while designing a shaft subjected to torsional loading? And so that's all for today's videos. For any doubts and suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet in the next video.